So, it's another good evening to you, my fellow cheated hearts of New York City. Good news, the blizzard's finally stopped. But the weatherman says there's a rainstorm coming. Just what we need, some good old-fashioned New York rain. So close your windows, lock your doors, wrap up warm and settle in for another evening with me, Kenna Martin, exclusively here on BC 304 FM. I'll be taking you all through the night and right up to the graveyard shift, because who ever heard of employment laws, huh? So to kick things off with a personal favorite of mine, here's Forever by Nervous Nervous Test test Pilot. Pilot. It stopped snowing days ago. I ran out of excuses not to go and see him. I don't want to think about this. I've got no desire to go out. Sure, I could use a shower. Playing a game would be perfect about now. If only I could concentrate. Well, shit. It's locked. I don't recall locking it. In fact, I don't recall it ever having a key. Don't feel like calling anyone, but I suppose I should listen to the messages. You have two new messages. First new message received today at 1.18 p.m. Congratulations. You have won tickets to the Krennic on Thames Museum's latest exhibit. Straight from the catacombs of Augur Peak, this is a -a once-in-a-lifetime chance to... Tickets to an English museum? This is New York, kids. Not interested. Message deleted. Second new message received today at 6.29 p.m. Hi, Alex. The nurse just told me you'd been in. Should have let me know. I'd have made sure I was here. It's been a while. I'm sure your dad appreciates it, love. You know he'd tell you that himself if he could. Call me on my cell when you get this. Goodbye. Love you. Bye. End of final message. I didn't call, Mom, because I knew you would be there, and I couldn't do it if you were. I don't know why. Please don't hate me. Ah, screw it. I'll call her in the morning, right? Right. God damn it. Talking to myself. My therapist says it's my desire for an audience, for company. I say it's because I constantly feel like I'm being watched. There's something behind the radiator. Maybe I can reach it. Ah, got it parcel I hadn't opened yet. Let's see. A DVD of Strangers on a Train. I bought this for Gavin. Ugh. Back behind the radiator it goes. I was walking through Washington Square Park the other day when I saw a woman having a long animated conversation with herself, apparently. Nobody else around. Power really on. Going at it. Good idea. With air almost. She was a redhead like me too. A bit older though. And you know what I realized? That's me, that is. When I eventually get fired from the station and end up missing... Nope, to you guys not so much, changing it. Let me have this one childish act of rebellion. So I'm not changing it. I kind of like bitter reminders. DJ, some hope for the future. While I've always been tempted to put it in the microwave, I think I'll leave it here for now. I've grown attached to the little guy. I call him Sam. There's something stuck up by the light bulb. I might be able to fish it out. Ah, got it. A parcel I hadn't opened yet. Let's see. A 10-foot extendable ladder with stand and carry case. I'll just put it back. Now, I'm sure it's here for a reason. I'm not changing it. Right, let's do this. Oh, look drama as my favorite reviewer gives a game a low score. Whatever. I've always loved his writing. Very personable. Makes me feel like I know the guy. Oh well. No time for that now. Gotta track my package. It has to be here today. A 
Of course. I had to change all my regular passwords. Gavin knew them. God damn it, what did I use here? I think I wrote it down somewhere when I was drunk. Oh, yeah. Ah, here it is, I think. The writer walks the shores where love inscribed its final kiss. Time to read, Alex. The snow might have stopped, but it's still utterly freezing. I'll pass, thanks. If I was drinking coffee or felt like reading, then maybe. But I don't, so no. I'd prefer to leave it on. I like the ambiance. Sure, yeah, I'll go to bed at seven in the evening. That'd be suitably pathetic. There's something in amongst the fronds. I should get it free sometime. Ah, got it. A parcel I hadn't opened yet. Let's see. So You Want to Give Up Smoking, a self-help book by I. Burnett. Kinda wish I hadn't found this now. I'll just put it back where it was. I don't really want to wear it. Let's do this then. Sophia's inhaler. Might as well bin this. Tomorrow. I haven't thought about this book in years. I doubt it's the one. The Mirror by Graham Masterson. I remember this being pretty terrifying when I was a teenager. I wonder if it'd hold up. Sanctum by Madeline Rue. This just came out. I have an especially strong connection to her writing. I can't wait to read it. In fact, everyone should. Yeah. I'm saving it for a special occasion. I can't face the shame of seeing the due date. 50 Great Coastal Walks of the British Isles, Volume 2. I checked this out of the library years ago, then forgot to return it. Don't ask me why. I've never even been to Britain. Hopefully the librarian's forgotten. Leaving Megalopolis by Gail Simone. I bought this because I loved her run on Secret Six, but I haven't had a chance to read it yet. Since I haven't read it, it Ayn Rand's Atlas Shrugged, a beautiful novel by an author whose beliefs I totally agree with. Just kidding, Rand was a fucking troll. I only bought this thing because of Bioshock. By applying the principles of objectivism to this, I can discern it isn't the book I'm after. I'd love to sit down and read this, but nah. Death, The High Cost of Living, just one of my many Neil Gaiman books. All the onk-wearing wannabe teenage goth girls in the world can't kill my love of the endless. Also, who am I kidding? I was totally an onk-wearing wannabe teenage goth girl. As shown in Horowitz's 2003 essay, This is the Wrong Book, this is the wrong book. Special Topics in Calamity Physics by Marisha Pessel. The only time I've wanted to slap and hug the main character at once. Good book. It could be this one. I should double check the title. Louis Cassell's The Charnel House Burial. My prized first edition copy. The one memento from Gavin I'll never get rid of. Oh, Cassell, you are a strange and troubled man. I wonder whatever happened to you. For your graduation, I hope there will always be room in your spectacular mind for me. You are my island. Love you forever and always, Gavin. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. Cassell famously became a hermit while writing this book. The island he moved to was called Augur Peak. I remember now. Augur Peak 1318. I resent having to pay special delivery for train tickets, but I need them today. The next train isn't for two weeks. I can't wait that long. What? The site says it was delivered and signed for. I don't recognize that signature, and even I would have remembered signing for it today. 
Looks like it says Benwood or something. What? Well, great. Fucking perfect. I need those tickets. Maybe it's a mistake. Maybe they'll still come. Maybe the website's fucked. It's too late to call them now. What else can I do but wait? Now it's storming. This is gonna be fun, making my way to the station by midnight. I'm not being sarcastic. I just want the tickets to get here. Guess I'd better find a way to spend my evening then. I don't feel like playing a game, so maybe a DVD is in order. Might make a change. Yeah, sure. If you insist, stomach, I'll grab some food. Rain, thunder, lightning, the works. So batten down those hatches and get ready for a cozy musical night in with me, Kenna Martin, exclusively on BC 304 FM. Three pickled onions and a slice of bread. What a fucking fantastic dinner. Alex, do the shopping from time to time, yeah? Hmm, it can't be locked. It doesn't even have a keyhole. Uh, it must be jammed. I think I can jimmy it open with something, if I can find something that'll fit. You know what? I think this little guy's tail would fit in the gap. This idea is so stupid that it might just work. Here goes. It fits perfectly. Aw, oh, shit. The tail's just snapped off. Well, this was one of my better ideas, wasn't it? Fuck's sake. Oh. I'm not closing it again after all that. Right, let's see what we have here. Photo of me and Gavin. It's broken. I put it here out of the way. And here are the DVDs. Don't really care what I watch. I'll just stick some crappy horror on. Thank you. That was Rob, my neighbor from the apartment down the hall. He has my package. The delivery man signed it and left it with him. He's bringing it over now. I'm just... Shit. I'm doing this. I have to get ready. Shit. Yes. <laughs> what now, Rob? Forgotten where I live? Davenport speaking. I... Thank you. I can't breathe. I can't fucking breathe. Alex, Jesus, how bad is this storm? Oh, hey, are you all right? I'm fine, thanks, fine. I just had a bit of bad news. I'll, I'll be fine. Sorry, Rob. Ah, oh, God, Gavin again? Nah, nothing to do with him this time. <laughs> Sorry, it'll be all right. I, I just need to sort some stuff out. Bad times. 
You know how it is. Hey, look, thanks for bringing this over. You sure? No, yeah, seriously, I'll be fine. Thanks, Robert. You only call me Robert when you're not okay, Al. I know you like your own company, but seriously, you know where I am if you need me. Yeah, I do. And honestly, honestly, tomorrow you're going to have me sniveling on your doorstep begging you to listen, but right now I just need... I just need... No, it's okay, Al. Take all the time you want. Wait, I won't be here tomorrow. Sorry, Rob, I'll call you. Please don't worry about me. I don't want to think about anything right now. The days are endless. I need to get ready to leave. There's always tomorrow. I'll call Mom tomorrow, too. Outside, the city begins to withdraw. A siren sounds in the night, blue light reflecting on brickwork as tireless paramedics rush the scene of another trauma. On the pavement below, a woman hurries home, casting furtive glances over her shoulder as she pulls her coat tight around herself, the rain beating patterns on the fabric. A car drives past, music disturbing the peace. The woman looks at the man in the car. He turns the music down, calls something out as he passes. I see the woman start to walk faster. She flinches at the thunder. The car drives off. Another set of sirens now. Somewhere in the distance, the city is drowning. This is where we live. This is our world. Ebb and flow, endless, forever. It's the perfect time for loneliness. The perfect time to indulge the selfish, petulant monologues of the dispossessed. But sometimes it's just like this, you know? Sometimes we can't help it. Sometimes we don't want to go out and hang out with your friends. Sometimes we don't want to talk. Sometimes we just want to wallow. You don't know me. You never fucking knew me. Go fuck yourself, you judgmental, self-righteous prick. Cat, I'll see you soon. looks like the storm didn't reach here. The snow is still falling. It's a clean, crisp night. Just past midnight. The train should be here any moment. So, hey, you been waiting long? I, uh, I'm not sure. I lost track of the time. Tell me about it. I nearly slept through tonight. There's a clock over there, though. It hasn't moved since I got here. Oh. Great. So, uh, where are you headed? A little port town. Last stop. <laughs> Me too. I'm not staying there, though. Catching the ferry to Auger, Auger Peak, Peak Island. Island. <laughs> yeah, me too. It's not a common destination, is it? What brings you to the island, if you don't mind me asking? <laughs> it's dumb. You'll laugh. Hmm. I'm headed there to dig around in the dirt and check out broken pots. Trust me, I won't laugh. Okay, fine. It's a bit of a personal pilgrimage. Ah, I won't pry any further. But... You know the funny thing? What's that? It feels that way to me, too. Train should be here soon. I think I can see it. It's going to be a long, boring journey. Fool that I am, I forgot to bring any recreational reading material. All I have to pour over are some historical texts. Thrilling. 
Hmm. It's a bit too big to carry around. The porter can get it when the train pulls in. There's nobody inside and it's all boarded up. No point. I'm not walking away. I'm here now. There's no turning back. I probably shouldn't start playing on the tracks. There's nobody in... He was vaping earlier. Cards, money, mace, the usual. So, I have this toy dog. Why did you bring it? I picked it up and put it in my purse. It seemed the right thing to do, don't you think? Understood. I guess... I guess I should let go of it. I won't need it after tomorrow. Just one final reminder of Gavin I can do without. Hey. Hey. You can take this. I've already read it. Pulp horror fiction? Yeah, sorry. No, not at all. <laughs> it's my guilty pleasure. <laughs> Mine too. This one's great. You ever heard of Cassell? I can't say I have. Oh, well, he... Looks like this is us. Two passengers. Well, this is my lucky day. It's freezing out here. You guys go on board old Gloria now. She's nice and warm. I'll come on and show you to your cabins momentarily. I'll just grab your luggage. Off you go now. Well, well. What's this then? Who's a cute little doggy? I know just who'll like this. Settle down, you. We're nearly ready. And if you start causing a scene now, I'll have to tell young Floyd what you've been up to. And we both know what'll happen then. That's it. There's a good boy. You just be a good wee writer and wait, watch and listen like you always do. It'll be over soon, and you'll be back home before you know it. Aye, I reckon so. 